In the previous videos looking at Spark SQL, we were looking at data frames, which is also a data set of row. These are effectively dynamically typed uh, collections, and they work really well in the sense that they are closely mirrored to what you deal with in SQL. But Spark has the ability to make data sets that are, are, have a, another type other than row. The data set can have whatever type T you want. Now, interacting with a data set when it uses some other type T uh, is a bit different than using them on rows. And so I want to go through a few videos where we look at how to deal with kind of a typed data set and read data into it, and then some of the gotchas that are associated with this. Now, when looking through the list of methods uh, before, you might have noticed they're broken up into these groups, the actions, the basic data set functions, and then there's these typed transforms. So one of the things you'll notice about the typed transforms is they all give you back a data set of either T or U, depending upon whether they are transforming the data in various ways. Join with is a data set of T comma U, a tuple, but all of them preserve that information, whereas there's also untyped transformations that give you back data frames. Last time in the earlier videos, we were really dealing with untyped transformation. They were giving us back the data set of row or data frame. And so we want to look at how we can deal with these data set of T operations. Now some of these are actually things we've already been doing. Things like filter, well filter doesn't change, so this, this is what we did before. Filter on a condition. Uh, filter doesn't change the type, and so it automatically gave us back a data set of T. There isn't a separate filter for that. Uh, but other things like map we didn't do and instead of join this has a join with. Now, one of the things you'll note here is that a lot of these are experimental. Uh, currently you know, the, the challenge with passing in these functions, in fact when motivating uh, the reason for using Spark SQL, it was because these, these lambda expressions can be opaque to Spark and it can't optimize things as well. Um, and so this is still kind of an, an area where they are uh, continuing to do research. So I just want to start off the code to, to do this uh, analysis. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to return to some data that we looked at before when we were doing RDDs. We looked at unemployment data but I pulled down a little bit different uh, data set. So previously we had looked at unemployment data in Minnesota. The BLS also has a file for just counties. Now you'll notice this is a significantly larger file. It has the data for all of the counties in the United States collected in it. Uh, there is this la.series file, and perhaps we should look at these real quick. So la.data.64 is the county file. This is the very long file, and it's just like the Minnesota file that we played with earlier. It has a series ID, a year, the period, a value, and this value can mean different things depending upon what series it is. And then there's footnotes that go into some of the columns, but not all of them. Also, these are tab-separated uh, so this is technically a TSV. The file does not end in TSV, but it is a TSV. There is also a series file, which, and this one is a bit longer, it gives us these different series as well as different information about them. The area type code, an area code, the measure code, whether it's seasonal, and descriptions of them. Uh, so we have this information that we can use and so for any this is an area where we could do a join for any of the data points in the county file we could look at what data series they represent also to potentially make some interesting plots I have brought in this zip codes file which has for every zip code in the United States, it gives a latitude, a longitude, the 
city, the state, and the county for it. And so this allows us to potentially plot counties versus longitude and latitude using the uh, unemployment data and then also looking at uh, the, uh, the series data. And we have to figure out how to, to merge these things together. So this is the data that I want to play with a little bit. We won't do too much with it, um, but this gives us something to, to work with and see how we can play with this in a tight uh, Spark SQL environment.